Hello, my name's Cornet Harry Sayer from the House of Cavalry Blues and Royals. So I'm very sorry we can't come to Sandhurst today to tell you about CVRT and the roles and responsibilities that Armoured Cavalry is used for. However, we're going to try our best through video to show you around the vehicle and explain what it is that we do. Come with me. CVRT scimitar, as you can see it is a small lightweight brachy vehicle which is ideal in allowing us to move quickly across the battlefield ahead of any friendly formations that we're working for. We can be working for anything from battle group up to division to, and our role is to find the enemy. So we go ahead of friendly forces, confirm where the enemy are and report back. In a CVRT scimitar is a crew of three, a driver, gunner and commander. And I could, at one point we could be in a screen looking for enemy forces and as a troop leader I could be looking to my junior call sign to supply me with information or even directly himself to uh, brigade to inform decisions that need to be made at higher elements to allow friendly forces to move safely through any area of responsibility. So 762 weapon system is a fantastic bit of kit. Uh, it's an effective range up to two kilometers. We hold 3,000 rounds in and around the turret and it has a rapid rate of fire which is easy to bring to bear on enemy forces used on dismounted infantry and any soft skin vehicles. So this is the 30mm Raden cannon which fires two types of ammunition, arm piercing and HE. Arm piercing is effective up to 2.4 kilometers and HE 3.5. We hold 201 rounds inside the turret which are all stowed internally in things we call wine racks um, and it, you fire in three round engagements so three rounds per target. The gun itself can hold six rounds at a time. As a commander, it's my responsibility to load the cannon. So this is the gunner's seat. He's in charge of traversing the turret left, right, up and down, which he can do through these controls here, up and down, left and right. He identifies targets through his times 10 optical sight here or his thermal sight here. He can also load the gun, however, that is the commander's responsibility. Now in the driver's seat, he obviously is in charge of moving the vehicle and the general upkeep of the vehicle while on the exercise. A good driver should not need too much input from the commander and be able to navigate the ground tactically uh, without, yeah, on his own. His sighting system is able to be used at day and night so he can obviously drive in all weather conditions. So I've taken you through the roles and responsibilities of the crew inside the vehicle and what the vehicle is capable of. And now I'm going to talk slightly more about exercise as a troop leader on an armoured cavalry regiment. So on exercise you're in charge of four vehicles, all capable of exactly the same things and you're moving quickly across the ground to either get to a line of departure or get to where the enemy are in order to report to them. The feeling of doing that as a troop leader is unbelievable. You're, you've got two nets going in your ear, you've got your troop net, you've got a squadron or a battle group net and you're trying to figure out what's going on, where everyone is and it sounds all completely hectic but actually it's so simple. You're there, you have a map and you're plotting what's going on. That, the responsibility you're given as a troop leader is second to none in the army, I'd say, but the abilities that you're given through the capabilities of the vehicle are ten times greater. So the joy and achievement that you feel being a troop leader is unbelievable in armoured cavalry. And as we develop over the next few years, we'll be getting Ares and Ajax and that whole family of vehicles, and at the moment we're using CVRT as a platform in which to discover new 